All praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Rikakadash, Yahweh, be the name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Shah, be the name of His only begotten Son, who they eagerly call Jesus Christ. Now, um, we're going to go into uh, this war that the Lord is declaring against the nation of Edom. See, it's firmly established in the scriptures that the Lord has declared war on the nation of Edom uh, for destroying his earth. During their rulership that they was given due to the blessing of their forefather Esau that they cried and weep for. And the Lord have declared war on uh, Esau and his heritage. Let's go get it out of uh, Exodus. Let's start with Exodus 3, no, 15, Exodus 15 and 3. Say, the Lord is a man of war, and Yahweh is his name. So the Lord is a man of war. See, he deals with war. Then let's get, uh, let's see, Isaiah 42. Is it Isaiah 40? No, Isaiah Salakia. Isaiah 47. You know what? Let me start with 42 first. <laughs> 42, 13, and 14 to say, The Lord shall go forth as a mighty man. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. He shall cry, yell, roar. He shall prevail against his enemies. I have long time holding my peace. I have been still and refrained myself. Now will I cry like a travailing woman. I will destroy and devour at once. You know, the Lord is going to be like a mighty man and a man of war. And he's going to prevail against his enemies. He's going to destroy his enemies at once. So then when you get to 47. forty-seven, it says, Come and sit down in the dust, O daughter of Babylon. This daughter of Babylon is, is a specific nation. Um of people that is talking about virgin daughter of Babylon. I'm jumping down to verse three. This is who he talking about. It say, uh, thy nakedness shall be uncovered. So he gonna expose who the daughter of Babylon is. Yeah, your shame shall be seen. I will take vengeance and I will not meet thee as a man. Okay, so He's coming in a different way. It's going to be like a man of war. And he's going to be de declaring war on these people. But it won't be like he meeting them as a man. Now let me get Isaiah 9 and 5. It says, For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise and garments rolled in blood. But this shall be the burning and fuel of fire. So when he come, like a man of war, like a mighty man, he's not going to meet these, these people like a man 
Uh, he's coming in a whole nother way. He's coming with burning and fuel of fire. And how is that going to play out? See, Isaiah, he gave you the whole operation. Um, now that daughter of Babylon, let's, let's address that first. Because you put in America, the daughter of Babylon, in the Google, what a pop up is this book from 1989. Alan Bonk, he wrote a book, 1989, America, the daughter of Babylon. Okay. He says, America. The daughter of Babylon deals with the prophetic future of the United States of America. The Bible reveals that there will be a second nation of Babylon, which is described in detail throughout the scripture and can be identified as America. August 1989. Okay. It gave the history on on um, this guy. Where was it? Oh, here it is. It says, uh, Alan Bonk taught Bible college courses in eschatology and comparative religions for 12 years. He founded and headed a research ministry for 10 years during the 1980s. He is active in a Denver-based ministry and also writes and records his own gospel, gospel for music. Okay, just to get a little history on that. No other Bible scholars agree. They're going back to the scripture. Isaiah 34. It says, For... My sword shall be bathed in heaven. Now that sword represents a weapon. And you see, it, he said that the Lord will, um, will, will, um, be like a man of war, like a, a mighty man. Now verse 2 say, For the Lord have any nation, I mean, for the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations, and his fury is upon their armies. So he's going to be making war with their their armies. He will utterly destroy them and will deliver them to the slaughter. But how is he going to deliver them to the slaughter? It says in verse 4, it describes this weapon on how the Lord is going to deliver these uh, his enemies to the slaughter. Verse 4 says, All the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll, and all their hosts shall fall down. So what's in the sky is going to be falling down. As the leaf fall off of a vine, and as for the falling fig from the fig tree. So this weapon that the Lord is going to be using is going to be falling like, leaves off the tree and the leaves fall in a cluster and like uh the fallen figs off a tree they fall in a cluster verse 5 it says for my sword shall be bathed in heaven that's why it's talked about the host of heaven now you're going to um let's get revelations this apostle john pretty much quoted isaiah in Revelation 6. But he did it in, in, in a different way. In verse 13, he said, And the stars of heaven fell to the earth, even as a fig tree casts her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. So he described these hosts as stars. See, they was... Uh, so-called fallen stars. Now Isaiah, 
He said host and John said star. And then he said, it shall come down upon Idumia. Who is Idumia? Now, in verse 6, in the last sentence, it says, For the Lord has a sacrifice in Basra and a great slaughter in the land of Idumia. He names Idumia again, but they connect it to Basra. Now, you're going to Isaiah. 63, it tells you what his Basra is. It says, Who is this that cometh from Edom with thy garments from Basra? So he's declaring war on Edom and the Edomite. These are the individuals that he's declaring war on. And he said his weapon is going to go to them. See, his weapon is going to come down upon Edom. And that weapon is going to be like a fallen fig off of a tree. You see? And why, why is it going to be like fallen figs? Because it's going to be multiple weapons. Let's get it in uh, Jeremiah. Jeremiah 50. Let me see. Jeremiah 50. Now, we was talking about the daughter of Babylon in Isaiah 47. And this is what I, uh, Jeremiah is saying the same thing. Say the word of the Lord spake on speak against Babylon. See, and it's not talking about uh, ancient Babylon because when you go down to verse 40 with 42, um, it tells you who it's talking about. It says, they shall hold the bow and the lance. They are cruel and will not show mercy. Their voice will roll like the sea and they shall ride upon horses Everyone put in array like a man to the battle against you, O daughter of Babylon. Now, who is, who is this day uh, holding the bow and the lance? Let me jump back up. Verse 9, it says, For the low, I will raise and cause to come up against Babylon, the daughter of Babylon, and assembly of great nations from the north country. What are these uh, great nations going to do? And they shall set themselves in array against her. From thence she shall be taken. Their arrows shall be as of a mighty expert man. None shall return in vain. So th these mighty nations is going to be shooting their arrows. That's why uh, you got Isaiah and John saying it's going to be like falling leaves and figs off of a tree because it's going to be multiple arrows coming towards uh, Babylon and Edom. It's going to be multiple uh, nations shooting their arrow. And see, when it says their arrows shall be like the mighty expert man, Let's get that. Now, they got a clear understanding of arrows. It's a broken arrow, the lost bond of the Cold War. During the Cold War, well, between America and Russia, they calling the nuclear missiles broken arrow. See, broken arrow. This is the arrow that's going to be sh shot to America. Babylon, the daughter of Babylon. See, broken arrow. This is what it's talking about. Now, Isaiah 54, he talked about this arrow. And what this these weapons is going to do 
and that he created these weapons. It says in verse 16, Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire, and bringeth forth an instrument for his work. I have created the waster to destroy. What is the waster? In verse 17, no weapon. It is a weapon. He created this weapon to destroy, thus says the Lord. See, the Lord created this weapon for the nation of Edom, because he says, sword or his weapon shall come down upon Idumea. And this is the battle that he's going to have when he come back. That's why he says, who is this that coming from Edom? Because he's coming to Edom to destroy uh, Esau's heritage. And uh, what is it? Exodus 17, 16. He can't leave this out. He said, for he said, because I... Because the Lord have sworn that the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. See, he declared war on Amalek, which is the Edomites, because Amalek was the grandson of Esau and one of the top tribes of the Edomites. He declaring war and have declared war on the Edomites. And he's going to, he created a weapon to fight them with and to destroy their kingdom with. Let's get Revelation 16, um, about the 19th verse. It says, And the great city was divided into three parts. What great city? What great city was divided in three parts? And how was it divided? into three parts. 17, the last verse, it says, And the woman which thou saw is that great city which reigned over the kings of the earth. See, that great city is the daughter of Babylon. When you go back up, verse 5, it says, The mystery Babylon the great, mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. See, that woman and verse 4 it says, And the woman was arrayed in purple and uh, scarlet color. Okay, and uh, where is it? Verse um, verse 3 it says, He carried me away in the spirit in the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast. So the woman was sitting upon the beast. Then in uh, 16, it tells you, And the ten horns which thou saw upon the beast shall hate the whore. They're going to start hating this great city, this woman that they was uh, in union with, united with. They're going to start to hate her. And she shall, and shall make her desolate and naked and eat her flesh and burn her with fire. How are these... Ten kings is gonna burn her with fire because it said the ten horns. Verse twelve it said the ten horns are ten kings. So how is these ten kings gonna burn her with fire? Because in Jeremiah, them that's the um, great nations. That's those great nations from the north country that's gonna shoot arrows, broken arrows, nuclear missiles, and they are gonna divide the city into three parts. See, when they shoot missiles at this great city, at this woman, they shoot them arrows. And uh, verse 21 gives some more details. It say, and there fell upon men a great hell out of heaven. So now it's describing these nuclear missiles, these arrows, uh, the waster created to destroy as a great hell. Every stone about the weight of a talent like stones falling out in the sky. Like in Revelation 6, 6 uh, it says, like the stars of heaven fell out of the sky. It says, and men blasphemy God because of the plague of the hell, for the plague thereof was exceedingly great. So a great hell coming out of the sky, 
uh, the weapon of the Lord, the sword, coming from down from heaven upon Idumea, upon the Edomites in their uh, capital, pretty much city, which is America. Because that whole beast is dealing with the nation of Edom. That's why it was scarlet color, meaning red, and the, and the dragon, the great dragon was red, the red, red dragon, because they represent the nation of Edom. And the Lord declaring war on these individuals. Let's get on, um, what, 14? He says, for they are the spirits of devils working miracles. See, that's why in the first verse it's talking about the dragon and the beast. These are the spirits of, the, of, of these devils, these deceivers, uh, these Edomites, which go forth to the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. So he's going to gather them to that battle, and that battle is going to be consistent of nuclear missiles. They're going to be shooting missiles at that great city, these 10 kings. This is going to be the battle that Isaiah was talking about, Isaiah 9 and 5. It's not going to be, but they're going to have bloody wars. Um, it's, all, it's, going, it's not going to all be about, or only be about men killing each other with guns and bleeding and all this. It's going to be with fuel of fire, burning and fuel of fire. Let's get that in my, uh, Malachi right quick. Malachi 4. They say, For behold, the day coming that shall burn as an oven, all, and all the proud, yeah, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that come shall burn them up, says the Lord of hosts that it shall leave neither root nor branch. And so this is how it's going to uh, trample on the nation of Edom. Look at verse 3. And ye shall tread down the wicked. Well, who is the wicked? The nation of Edom. That's why I'm, in Malachi 1 and 4 it says that they the border of wickedness. For they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that I will do this says the Lord of hosts, the Lord of armies, the Lord of war. See? And this is how Yahweh has declared war on Edom and will execute his war plan. One more. Let's get Isaiah 66. In 15, it says, For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh. See, that sword is going to be them nuclear missiles. And the slain of the Lord shall be many. Okay. And we're going to get some detail. Zechariah 14 and 12, it says, And this shall be the plague. That's that plague in Revelation 16 and 20. It says, And this shall be the plague, wherewith the Lord shall smite all the people that fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet. Their eyes shall consume away in their holes. And their tongues shall consume away in their mouth. How is that going to happen? Because he's coming with flames of fire and that weapon, which is a nuclear bomb, that's going to be a bunch of fire burning up these Edomites and mainly the heart of their um, kingdom, the throne of their kingdom, which is Babylon the Great, uh, the daughter of Babylon, the United States of America. But I'm going to leave it there. All praises to Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shah, Bashim Rikakadash. Uh, double honors to the elders pushing the truth. Peace to the elect worldwide. The blacks, Hispanics, and Native American descendants of slaves scattered around the globe on slave ships and through many captivities. 
Our kingdom is at hand. Shalom.